Now that Universal Analytics is dead, the clock is ticking for you to learn GA4. To make this easy on you, I'm going to give you the quickest guide to learning GA4 that you'll ever need so you can get it installed on your site and hit the ground running. Boy, that escalated quickly. To do this, I'm going to use my handy periodic table of Google Analytics 4. It makes it super easy to bounce between critical elements of GA4 and it's what I'll be using to walk you through all the significant backend changes to the system. And to follow along with this table, you can download it at ddu.ai slash GA4 table. Now sit back and relax as I show you how to use the periodic table of Google Analytics 4 to understand how the back end of GA4 works. In this video, we are going to be talking about the back end of Google Analytics 4 and how it's different from Universal Analytics. And there are a lot of differences between the two products. Some of these differences you're not going to like, but others you're going to learn to love. I love you. I love you. I love you. The backend elements of GA4 are available in this PDF as well. And if you want to learn everything about GA4, be sure to download this free PDF at du.ai slash GA4 table. And I also want to emphasize that this is part one of our periodic table of GA4 walkthrough, and we are going to be covering the backend. Stay tuned for part two, which will be available at ddu.ai slash GA4 front. And it's also in the description of this video. And in our front end video, we're going to talk about reports that you can access within GA4 and how they're different from those that were in GA3. And with that out of the way, let's dive into the Google Analytics 4 backend. Now, if you ask me, the most significant changes to GA4 are on the backend. While Universal GA was built for the desktop web era, GA4 is mobile first. And mobile first has many benefits in limiting data collection, privacy for users, and future thinking elements. But it's also a challenge to adjust to a brand new backend product. Getting GA4 onto your site and collecting data has many new terms and concepts to learn. It's almost overwhelming when you think about it. So I wanna focus on the key elemental differences in GA4 as well as what's different from Universal. And you're going to need to understand these if you want to make a successful transition. So let's get into some of the terminology and what it means to you. The first term is event-based data model. Now, this is the new data model that makes Google Analytics 4 different and more efficient than previous versions of GA. We used to have things like uh, scope levels for our events that were coming in. We had user-based, we had session-based, we even had hit-based data, so you could send pretty much whatever data you wanted to, but you needed to get the scope right, and it also made Google Analytics a pretty inefficient database. So with an event-based data model, everything you send in is an event, and then you get to classify it in the interface for what that event does. And trust me when I say this is an improvement in the long term, but it is painful at first because it used to just be done for you. Now you have to put some thought into how you want to classify your data in GA. Next, data streams. Data streams is how you pull data directly into GA4 for data through a web stream. And you can have a web stream, you can have an app stream. It's basically the way that you tell Google what data they should be paying attention to and what data is coming into your account. You can have one or many data streams coming into your account. And if you ask me, most websites probably really only need one unless you have an app. Data Driven U only has one, for example. And so one stream if you're trying to replace the most standard use case of Universal Analytics. Next, Setup Assistant. And this is the best way to get started with GA4 because Google will walk you through what you need to do to get set up and to make sure that when you have Google Analytics 4 installed, you're doing it the right way right from the beginning. And one of the cool things about it is that they have all kinds of fun stuff in the setup view, like they have the ability to do enhanced measurement. And enhanced measurement is a button that you click that gives you things like scroll tracking automatically, video tracking, and even outbound link clicks. And you can set this up, put some parameters in place, and you don't have to put any more code on your site. Contrast this with Universal Analytics, and you needed to be almost a technical genius or learn from me at Data Driven in order to know how to get scroll tracking or video views on your site. And so this is a huge improvement where you can do it with just a click of a button. Next, we have Debug View. Now, Debug View is the best feature in GA4, hands down, if you ask me, because it allows you to test your website out without having that data show up in your reports. So when you go into Debug View, you can test the entire site make sure everything's working properly, kick the tires, do some test transactions, buy something on your site, fill out the lead form, and make sure that Google Analytics is tracking it properly. And then when combined with the debug mode that you have in GTM or Google Tag Manager, you can basically make sure your site's working with no footprint whatsoever. 
The old way of doing this was not nearly as efficient and it was sort of frustrating because you had to do a lot of filters, filtering by IP address, and you had to be really diligent if you didn't want bad data coming into your site. Now you can pretty much do it automatically if you're in Tag Manager and you're debugging your site. And plus, it gives you real-time information instead of having to wait 24 hours for this to show up. So you can see why I love it and why I think it's the best feature in GA4. Okay, user properties. This is how you can capture everything you know about a visitor without identifying them personally. And that's really nice, right? So the user properties allow you to get a lot done. And then the final one in this section is change history. Now this is one of the few reports that remains from GA3. The change history report tells you who did that and when did they do it. Now the reason why this is important for GA4 is because there's gonna be a lot of new changes that you introduce as you get used to GA4, and you're gonna to wanna to know who made these choices and these changes so you can either ask them what they did or you can keep track of the changes that are happening in your account. And so change history becomes important again because there's gonna be a lot of new users, novice users inside GA4 trying to make it work, but if they don't, then you can at least know what settings they try to change. Okay, so that's some of our data elements. In our next section, we're gonna move on to the settings within GA4. Okay, let's talk about the settings in GA4. At the time I'm recording this video, there are fewer settings available in GA4, uh, which has actually given me mixed emotions over the years about having fewer settings. Oh, I'm in a glass case of emotion. On the one hand, I miss having complete control over many aspects of the product, like filters, view management, and more. On the other hand though, simple can be better and make a product more accessible to people who are afraid of getting their settings wrong. Now I've been teaching GA in the classroom for over 10 years and I know many people are afraid of changing settings in GA because they think they're gonna break something. And so if you can fix that or if you can make sure you're not breaking anything, you're gonna be in pretty good shape moving forward. But what settings are available and which are different in GA4? Let me walk through a few of them with you. There's one called reporting identity. Do you wanna report on your users based on their device? Or do you wanna consolidate them based on more than just the device, their user ID, or even what Google knows about them? You can now change your reporting identity to be more encompassing so you're not gonna have as many broken sessions as people go across devices. You also have custom dimensions. Google Analytics has given you a very robust and generous number of custom dimensions in GA4 so you can customize what things look like in the account and you can take basically any event data you collect and you can turn it into a custom dimension and use that throughout the interface to make your reporting better and so if you can dream it you can do it as google analytics 4 gets better from a reporting perspective and it all comes down to customizing the dimensions you track and the metrics you track within ga4 administrator settings which is basically can show you what you can do to make sure your account runs smoothly you can make sure that you're administering things the right way then we have property settings, which are tied to your unique web property. So if you have a unique web or app property coming in and a data stream, you can make sure that, that is coming in properly and that you're configuring it the right way. And then we have attribution models. This is how you can attribute attributions into your account. You can finally set account-wide attribution models in GA4 and they populate the conversion tracking across every single conversion listed in your account, which is a really cool addition. It was something that was promised in universal analytics, but it never actually made it to the prime time. You could do attribution modeling in a single report. Now all of your reports have whatever attribution model you want. And the default is no longer last non-direct click, which is a really nice improvement. User management, you can control who can access your account. And all these settings are essential to understand and configure, especially in a modern era of web privacy. Of course, one of the reasons why I love GA4 is that with the new data model, we have even more control over the data we collect. So I'm gonna finish out this video by talking about the data elements and why they're different in GA4. So the final section I wanna discuss in the back end of GA4 is the data elements available for importing, exporting, and cleaning up data between systems. Data is one area where GA4 is truly light years beyond universal analytics. But why is that? Well, because unlike universal analytics where all data was final, you can actually have some control over how you wanna handle the data you collect and integrate with other Google products. Let me show you how this works by defining our next set of terms. GA4 has something called data deletion requests. And now you can finally delete data from Google Analytics about users who say, hey, delete my data. So you can be compliant with stuff like the GDPR and you can erase 
user data and take it out of GA, which is pretty awesome. Universal Analytics, you could do this, but it was a very lowly advertised feature and it was really hard to do, so it's much easier to do in GA4. Data import, you can import your offline data into Google Analytics using the import feature. And it's a little bit different than how it was in Universal Analytics, but I think it's gonna be much better once people start to use it more. Then there's this concept of clean data. Now the quest for clean data is never ending, but it got a lot easier in GA4 because of the way things are being collected. The way that data is being collected and measured is a lot more secure. Um, it's not an open measurement protocol like they had in Universal Analytics, and so your data is gonna be more clean by nature. Then we get into product linking. The Google Ads linking, it seamlessly links your Google Ads data into your Google Analytics reports, which is a nice feature and it's gonna keep on getting developed and keep on getting better. Then there's the killer one, BigQuery linking. You can get lightning fast access to your raw analytics data using BigQuery and this is free. This is something that used to cost over $150,000 to enable with GA360. Now it's included in the base GA4, which is something that many, many, many people are excited about. Search console linking, you can view your search data inside GA4, so linking those products together better than ever. Merchant center linking, you can get better tracking for free and paid Google product listings if you're a e-commerce store. Advanced ad management linking, this is when you connect with things like Google's premium ad products like Ad Manager, Search Ads 360, and Display and Video 360. And so these integrations, I'll warn you or I'll tell you, they are with Google products, but they are in some ways, even above and beyond what you could get in Universal Analytics, and that's just in the first release. These things are only gonna get better over time. Next, we have data retention. How long should you retain data in your GA account? You can set that, um, and I would recommend setting that to be as long as possible so you can get your reports to last for a long time, but this is something that was built into GA4, whereas it was a late addition to Universal Analytics around GDPR. Data filters, this is one that I think is pretty limited. You can modify and clean your data before it enters your account using filters, but they're not quite as good and they're not quite as encompassing as the ones that we had in views in Universal Analytics. Now I think the reason why is because no longer are we setting up views in GA4. Basically we have exploration reports where we can filter and we can choose what is displayed to people. And so if we're choosing to only display certain metrics and certain dimensions to our constituents who have our data, then we don't need as much of a need for filters. At least that's my assumption as to what Google's doing. Um, don't love it. I wish that I had more control, but it, it's out there and hopefully it will make us more efficient because we're not spending all this time trying to get the filters right. We have Google Signals, which is Google's built-in cross-device tracking with a little bit of machine learning built into it, which I'm excited about because it's gonna allow Google to stitch sessions together across devices based on what they know about a user and they can give you a better profile of who's going to your site and you're not gonna have as many broken sessions. Okay, so as you can see, there are so many new capabilities in GA4 that the back end is truly a modern marvel compared to the 15 year old Web 1.0 GA3 backend infrastructure. And while it's painful to transition after using a product for 15 years, GA4 is built on a much better foundation and it was built from the ground up with a mobile first perspective. And yes, it does include reimagining the front end reports, which has been a painful transition for most users. And that's why in our next video, I'll be spending more time talking about the front end differences and give you some reason for hope as you transition to GA4. Okay, so that's it for our walkthrough of the back end elements of GA4 and how they're different from Universal GA. Do you wanna read in-depth articles about each of these elements? The best way to continue learning about GA4 is to go to ddu.ai slash GA4 table to get the latest version of the periodic table of Google Analytics and see our 30 plus expert articles that we've written on GA4. And I look forward to sharing the front end elements with you in our next video, so stay tuned to watch the next video in this series.